ask you to come to each one so I can just go through all of the housekeeping.
Oh, it's just on the extra screen. Okay. I needed to log on, but I have a flex screen. The mouse wandering around it. I've tried to turn on. Yeah, it's my favorite. I used to look cool into the other room, I think it's just dead. I don't like me. Um, not that we're actually using this, by the way, but. Um, well, there's nothing on the computer on? No. <laughs> um, I mean, you might want to look at some of the blue pages I talk about. Feel free to be online. Yeah, I have to keep on saying it. Who's got the keys? And I forgot to say here, instances are here with the resources. Okay, we'll talk to Acid in the box. Okay, thanks, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Cool. Welcome. Wow. What a year, eh? <laughs> um, I thought it might be useful for me at least if we just quickly go around and find out hey, what, where you're from and what you did this year uh, and what you think you're doing next year. Sort of just in one sentence. Particularly with computer science with the new tech and so on. Right. I'm David Beginsworth from the College. Uh, I did the science programming algorithms and hardware infrastructure with my year of this year. Next year I've got to I've, and that was a brand new course that, that uh, introduced at year 11. Next year I've already got a year 12 course. I've got to figure out where you have to actually go as far as the unit standards that I've been using, the achievement standards that are available and sort of figure out a mix. But uh, I'll probably will be doing something. Yeah, Peter goes to Jury High School, but I don't teach level one, and I don't teach level eight in science. It's not a problem with the computer at all, just in terms of computer science background. Um, she became a late teacher. Um, so she's struggling with computer science. She's uh, trying to get going with Scratch and work in the junior class, and she's trying to get it out. So uh, I'm not too sure what it means after next year. I'm not sure it's probably going to <coughs> um, I teach the level 2 and level 3 course. Um, many years ago, I taught a subject called computing, and we actually taught basic programming and logo programming. Um, and I like David, I think that's looking, depending on my clientele, it's like a very variable range of abilities, um, introducing some of the things on the subject to level 2. But uh, the kids will have very little basis because we take kids into level 2 with no IT. I'm Rona, I'm from Burnside High School and um, yeah, so we've done the level one, we had a um, sort of like a combo course. The first two, all the year 11 students did the digital information because we really feel that that's important, they need to have those fundamental skills and we're quite passionate about that. Um, then in terms two, three and four we split, um, three classes with the programming module, five classes with the media module. Um, and in the programming, we did the algorithm design, the actual coding, and we did the computer science. Interesting, and I think the kids enjoyed it, but I think for some of them, the computer science was just a bit too hard. But that's okay, they coped with the algorithms, and I'm quite sure to relate with the coding. They've got some knowledge of programming. And programming is fundamental to so many things. Um, it is fundamental to all the digital technology. So they've got some knowledge of that. And it'd be really good to see some really good kids come up as well. So next year, we're doing the level two, and they do split from the beginning, and we're probably going to have programming hardware as a course, and information media as a course in level two. And then the programming hardware, um, I'm hoping to do all three programming modules, plus the kids will do the Cisco in their own time for the first two terms, and then in the third term, I'll focus on the level two hardware term. So that's my first um, for next year. Uh, Patrick Baker from Milton. Um, we had a um, full achievement standard course at year 11, including the three computer science ones. Um, yeah, they found the concepts quite difficult to get the hands around. First, but that was partly not the fault. It was, it was much my fault. I was trying to put it across to them, but there was, there was some great resources and we got there and uh, so the written reports, they managed to, to all submit reasonable standard written reports, which was, was required for the external assessment for this one. 
Um, next year, we're branching into a media side and a, and a community side, side, and I'll be doing this at level two and three computer science ones. Kids that took it, but because it was the first year, I think the kids that took it, they read computer, ignored science, and they were amazed at how difficult some of it was for some of them. For others, they really, you know, they really came to grips with it, and uh, and it was really exactly what they wanted. And uh, yeah, so I'm just hoping that the culture in our school can change from one where computing seems an easy option into one where it's seen. I'm Rose, I'm Hayley. I actually teach junior IPT with a bit of programming stuff and a business admin stats course. I'm thinking I'm computing more text year, but I'm not sure which one it is. Text year, who's here with me, does all the year 12 and year 13 and stats courses at the moment. So I'm here to fill in the gaps on what he's learning so we can figure out what we're teaching. Hi, I'm Lee Brown. Here with the filmer at Brinstock, but she's still a pretty good run now. But uh, rather than the program that I've been doing media, that I'd like to branch out and spend the energy here. It's always growing, changing. I'm not quite sure what we're teaching next year yet in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what's going on. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mel, and I've um, flown down to Tarama Boys College. Um, yeah, we've had a really successful year um, with our little one course and we combined the media and the computer science course. Thank you so much for your algorithm um, resource because I use that extensively. Um, I'm a chemist by trade, so self taught and um, so I have a page of his voice most days. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's been really good that I've enjoyed it and we're doing the um, computer science at level two. Um, they did enjoy the um, one for and I thought it was just too good. So I very much enjoyed the programming. Um, can't keep them away at lunchtime. Um, and I really enjoyed We did a bit of computer science and connected to the external of the external video one to not end with the um, different classes. Mm -hmm. It was just fun. Adrian from Christchurch Amputus. Um, I'm also a chemist by trade, but just, I've landed in ICT for years and um, the level one teacher has just left, so I've got a brand new baby teacher to train up. And I'm not actually sure what was covered in level one, so I think it was mainly design. And um, the kids were always complaining about these 14 page things, so, <laughs> so, so that's uh, going to be my challenge. I'll be telling my new teacher exactly what he's going to be teaching. And the year 10s, I've been building them up, so in year 11, they will be doing some programming and some computer infrastructure as well. This year, I'll, uh, next year, I'll do standards again with the year 12s. It's not a strong bunch, and paper will So, once again, I'll, I'll go back to unit standards and, and wait for <laughs> my time. Yeah. Well, okay, so well, a variety of experiences, and um, the, the thing that's really exciting for me is seeing people give, give things a go, and obviously it's pressure to acquire here, but that's, that's, that's cool. Um, just a few comments on some of the things you've mentioned, actually, and I'll work backwards, so the, the 14 page things. <laughs> um, the ministry require that it's no more than 14 pages in Ariel Scott correctly, uh, 12 point or something. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, do you know how hard it's been to keep programs spot correctly with the standards and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, the, um, in, in my, well, looking at the exemplars, and there may or may not be people who have given me information about the, um, what's actually been handed in, but in my experience, 14 pages would be way longer than what's needed. It's mm -hmm. just a limit. Um, do we have any ideas? I mean, some of you have had kids hand things in. So, I mean, what, some of the good work would be roughly how long? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that, that is a, that's a 
know, I don't think students will go back as much reading pages. So, um, and you know, we always say in computer science, you know, an incredible one page article would actually give a PhD, but it would not be an MCA. Um, it's, it's just absolutely nails it. So, but, but on the other hand, wording it incredibly well. Uh, it's not always a strength for some of these students. And, and one of the messages at this stage is that being able to word things well is something that's needed in industry. Yeah. So, um, another um, sort of related comment with, with those reports, and I'll keep on emphasizing it through this, is the importance of individualizing things. Because the report, uh, I mean, the, the standards say things like um, demonstrates an understanding of such and such a topic. Well, to look up Wikipedia and paraphrase it, is kind of might demonstrate an understanding of it, but really, if if they take it and do something with it themselves, um, that makes a difference. And a lot of the stuff I talk about is what could students do with it themselves. And with most things, it's it's like you know, here's um, uh, here's a um, something to sort. So make up your own numbers and sort them. Or you know, here's some, some a credit card number with an error in it. Get your own credit card number or make up a credit card number and talk about the errors in that so that you've actually done it on your own data, basically. Um, or even if you want to combine it with programming, write a program to do it so that um, you know, it's obvious that the student had to understand it to be able to produce that output. It's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's a little more than what's asked for, but it just makes it obvious. Um, with the interface evaluation stuff, especially, um, uh, you know, evaluate an interface. Um, one of the worst things they could do was sort of look at an interface and say, well, it's got 10 buttons and some of them are different colors and I like that. Um, you know, so it's just a surface thing. But actually use it. Like, oh, um, I got you know, my teacher to come in and try and get the data projector going and you know, press the buttons and they got confused because one of them was labeled you know, BGA1 and BGA2 and they couldn't tell, didn't know what BGA was or something like that. And now you start talking about someone, a person doing something with the actual artifact. The only thing you can do worse with an interface is say, I built this interface and it looks pretty good to me. <laughs> because most interfaces look great to the person who built them. Um, and they fully understand how they work. And you give them to someone else and they get extremely confused. Um, so, so, yeah, individualizing stuff is, um, it's not that hard, but it, that's the big challenge with it. If it was an exam, that's fine. You could just say, you know, what's the binary number for 23? Write it down. And everyone in the country can do that. Um, but it's not. So rather than that, just sort of say, oh, you know, on my iPod it displays um, characters, and those characters are stored using ASCII, and you know, like here's my favourite song, and, and the ASCII code for my favourite song is this, and, and, and suddenly you know that the students actually gone, either they've gone through it, or they've somehow done it for them, but hopefully the teacher's got a few ideas that it was a thing that worked for that student because they really is their favourite song. Um, and this terminology, um, because. One of the whole points of getting computer science in high school was, was to get people who actually know what computer science is. Um, and, and so there's a couple of words that are really confusing. And um, one of them is the word computer science, which obviously um, someone mentioned that you know, people didn't notice the word science. And, and, and even if they do, it's um, often you know, like, oh, maybe that's doing chemistry with computers or something like that, right? <laughs> um, and so it, it's, a, it's a really bad name, but it's the one that's used all around the world for what this stuff is that we're looking at. Um, and so we decided to stick to the one that's used all around the world. And, and, and after a while, the cultural product that everyone knows what it is. Computer science includes all sorts of stuff. It includes algorithms. It includes interface evaluation, computer graphics, visualization. Uh, performance, network security, all sorts of things. Um, my, my sort of summary of it is making systems um, that are fast, easy to use, reliable, um, secure, uh, and, and um, efficient. Might be, you know, they don't use a lot of battery power because they, 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 they don't do more computation than they have to. Uh, and, 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 and then if we go through all the different areas that you're looking at, um, if, you know, efficient might mean like on a, an MP3 player that the files are as small as possible so you can get thousands of things on your MP3 player instead of just 10 songs on your MP3 player. And some people remember when, you know, carrying 10 songs with you was a big deal, right? <laughs> uh, and now people carry 10,000 songs with you, know, either. So, you know, and, 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 you know, easy to use, you've got usability, all that sort of stuff in there. 
um, secure so that when you do online banking or when you lose your PDA, someone can't just crack it and you know, get all the data out of it, or the backup of your PDA, they can't crack that and get all the data out of that. So there's, there's all these things that, um, and, and the, the, the kind of products that come out of this, we think of things like you know, um, iPods and YouTube and Google Mail and Google Search and all that sort of stuff. And, and so the idea ultimately would be if a student says, oh, well, I, I could build something that, you know, um, Facebook, you know, they're a bit late, but if they thought, oh, let's build Facebook, oh, hang on a minute, it'll have to be really fast because I'm hoping to get millions of users all at the same time. It's definitely easy to use because I want adults who don't know much about computers to be addicted to this thing. Um, it has to be reliable. Like any time someone goes on Facebook, it has to just work. If it's down half the time, then I can use it. Um, it has to be secure because boy, you don't want people sending each other's you know, information on Facebook. <coughs> now, that's a huge issue for them. It has to be efficient because you don't want people to make a post and it comes up you know, the next day. We'll post on the next day and we'll, we'll do it um, tomorrow. So almost anything that people build. Um, that is really, really successful. It's got all of those things. And to make all of that, well, to be fast, it has to use good algorithms. We used to use you to know how to evaluate the interface and not say, well, I built it and I like using it. Um, to, um, to be uh, reliable, you have to be able to write a program that you know won't crash and so keep on failing and so on. To be secure, you need to know about cryptography and secret codes and all those sort of things. Um, and, and, and so, um, yeah, it, it, and it's very much moving from being a user to being someone who can create stuff kind of based on those ideas. So I, I sort of wanted to paint that big picture because it's really important that you and your students are aware that it's not just a bunch of academic kind of products that are kind of useful. It's, it's what makes stuff that people pay millions of dollars to use, billions of dollars to buy. Um, YouTube was sold for one point eight billion dollars, I think, after one year. Um, yeah, but the guys that built trade me. You know, sold it for hundreds of millions of dollars, um, and and, so the, and actually, that, and even that's that, that's kind of you know the, the ministry government motivation is that you know we have people paying New Zealand millions of dollars to use stuff that we make, rather than we pay millions of dollars overseas to use Microsoft Office and Photoshop and all that sort of thing. Um, but um, so hopefully, one of the students will create the next cool thing like Facebook that no one's ever thought of, and you know, millions of dollars. In but to me, the real motivation, and I think some touched on it, and sorry, I'll get things mixed up quickly, but um, that some of your students find out that actually this is really interesting, like it really wasn't, and vice versa. And there's no problem with that. So there's, you know, some of the students that love computers may not, and, and love Facebook, um, may not be interested in figuring out how to actually build it. And that's fine, they will be the users. Uh, and as the tax said, there are two industries that who their customers users and, and it's, you, know, you need users to run the industry, um, but the other people who are spending the money who have the addiction, uh, who you know, keep driving things along, uh, but it's the dealers <laughs> that, uh, that make the money. Um, and yeah. they have that in LG6 in the school context actually, so I won't push it too far that you, know, you want dealers, not users in the school. <laughs> 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 But so, and, and one of the, so, so there's, there's a whole lot of areas of computer science, and like this, so I've talked about security and <coughs> uh, graphics and all sorts of stuff like that. One area of computer science is called programming. And um, things computer scientists once said that computer science is as much about programming as astronomy is about telescopes. And I, th I think that's a really uh, important thing uh, to get in context uh, because traditionally, Computer science has been taught at introductory levels as programming. And the message to students is computer science is programming. Uh, and the reality is that programming is the same as telescopes for astronomers. So astronomers love the telescopes. They spend lots of money on telescopes. They're always using them. They're always looking into them. But astronomy is not about telescopes. Uh, um, and it's what they, you know, it's, it's about seeing the stars and the planets and discovering things and doing amazing things with this key instrument of the telescope. And there are some astronomers, and there are some computer scientists who actually, you know, some astronomers probably never use a telescope. Uh, or at least they, you know, they tell other people how they've got to do with their telescopes, but they never actually touch one. And, and it's the same in computer science. Um, you will get people designing amazing systems uh, who may not actually use the computer. They'll, they'll hire a bunch of programmers and say, look, I know what I wanted to do. I want this security method. I want this encryption. I want this thing over here. Uh, I can't really quite do it myself, but you're an expert. 
interested in it, so you do it. But I know what the components are. And so, uh, so one of the things I hope, one of the subliminal messages you'll be giving your students is, and, and that, those, that collection of three standards at level one and at level two are called programming and computer science. Um, so that, and um, it would be you know, really good to kind of keep that message there. There's actually two programming ones. Now, programming is the nuts and bolts of computer science. It's what you need to put wheels on the other ideas. Uh, so yes, two thirds of it is about programming. But in reality, for someone who is a computer scientist, who you know, people like Google and Facebook and so on would hire, um, programming, well, it's, it's what they do all the time, but it would probably only be like 20% of what they know about. Um, and so uh, what they actually know about is all that stuff, and to do that stuff, they program it to make it happen. Um, the other one area of computer science is algorithms. And Normally, when you look at, at computer science textbook or something like that, when we say algorithms, we talk about there are algorithms for well known problems. And the well known problems are typically searching and sorting and various forms of optimization, like what's the shortest you know, route between these two cities or these two addresses on a GPS or something like that. And so, and one of the really unfortunate things that happened in the standard, and we're kind of trying to busily backpedal now, is that one of the programming standards got called algorithmic structures, designing algorithmic structures. Um, the term algorithmic structure is not something that's really widely used. If you Google it, it's kind of not, not really there. Um, and in fact, it, it's, it, it was kind of an accurate, technically accurate description of the design of a program, uh, but for various reasons that there was algorithm structures, so technically correct, but what we've realized is that it's incredibly misleading because one of the computer science components was understanding algorithms, and I've certainly dealt with a few people who have thought that they're the same thing, and we can get two standards for the price of one, and we're not quite that, but you know. Um, and so in the students' minds, uh, it's going to be really helpful if algorithms is taught as a part of computer science, but programming is taught as two things, as design and implementation. Um, and, and so the design is that 1.45 standard, and it's 2.45, and the implementation is 1.46, 2.46. And I'm, I'm not going to talk much about these at all today, because um, my focus is going to be on, in fact, um, the 2.44 standard, or 1.44, I don't know much about 1.44, because we just don't have enough time. Uh, and some of you have lived through it this year. Uh, which, which do focus on um, basically an, an understanding of the areas of computer science. Um, so, yeah, I just, just want to put all that in, in perspective. So it's quite useful if you refer to one. 245 doesn't have the word algorithm in it, by the way. Yeah, get that pulled out eventually. So that's, that's good. 145. Do, do you know if it's going through for next year? I can't remember, but it, it probably still has the word algorithm structure in it. Yeah. But in, 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 either way, it's, it's about designing the programs. And the other thing is that, and, and this is a matter of great debate, <laughs> but um, the, the fact that there are two standards is more of a historical sort of artifact. And, and the ideal, and, and to do it the way you can see it, said, no, it's, it's a, the absolute ideal is to teach the two together. It's very hard to teach someone how to program if they don't know how to design a program. Uh, and it's very hard to say, design something that you don't know actually how to implement. You know, it's like getting someone to design a house, but they've never seen one, or, or to build a house, but, but you know, here's the plans. You do exactly what I tell you, and you'll build the house. And, and neither of those are very satisfying. So, um, but for reasons of, well, there's various things. One is you may not have time to assess one of them, and that, that's fine. So that the students do both of them, but you just assess one of them and show that they've achieved that. They when we look at the number of people who did the different standards this year, which is kind of interesting, I'll uh, so, um, put this data from the MBQA. Uh, this isn't the final values, although it's sort of ended up being published with it anyway, so it's fine. Uh, pretty ambiguous. So, uh, <laughs> the giant Venn diagram. There's 741 students in New Zealand who did all three of those standards. Okay. Um, how many people would have students that fall in that part of the diagram? Um, there are 784 students who did design and implementation together. So 
Uh, and how many of you would have students at this? You know, one or two students at this? Yeah. Um, there were 38 students who only learned how to design a program, but apparently never managed to program one, or at least didn't submit evidence that they did. Um, now, that, that's the one which would, would have been nice to have been zero, but um, some people would definitely want it to be zero. Um, and there were a lot of people who implemented programs. Now, either they were given a design or they were sort of did their own rough design. And, and that's, that, that, that makes a bit of sense because maybe you've got time to do design in a lot of detail. Um, the photographs <coughs> are up on the New Zealand Computer Society website in the news. Um, so computer science, there were 338 people who did computer science and no programming too, which is, from my point of view, kind of okay, because remember I said there are people who sort of don't, you know, don't understand the concepts, but don't necessarily implement them and so on. Um, and then, um, you know, the 300 of that did implementation as well. Um, so, you know, we've... we've it's, it's heartening to see that there's so many students around the country who have actually done something in at least, and hopefully some of these mental steps can be bad. We realise. Uh, I have the impression, um, well, there's, there's 107 schools that registered, and this was a few days before the deadline, um, and that's about a quarter of the schools, so I suspect that you know, roughly a quarter of schools have actually bitten the bullet and had a go at these new standards, which is not too bad, given that probably you know, one twenty of the teachers would feel confident with these standards. Substitute your own evaluation of that. Um, so, so yeah, that's um, that's kind of what happened. And just to, re to remember what computer science is, if we ask that very authority Wikipedia, um, it, which actually is pretty good. In fact, most computer science stuff on Wikipedia is pretty good because computer scientists are pretty fussy about making things accurate. Um, so, the, um, you know, there's boring definitions in that here, but it gives a few areas. So, computational complexity theory, so that's in the first year standard. Um, by the way, the standard wasn't designed from this, but when I saw the standard, I thought, well, how does that compare with this definition? I, I compared it with lots of definitions, and it, it actually covered it pretty well. Um, programming language theory, which is one of the topics in the Line 1074, um, and human computer interaction. So, all of those topics were in there, and then when we look at um, stuff that's coming up, um, there's uh, oh, I can't see it in a hurry, but any, anyway, but, um, uh, most of the stuff that's coming up, you'll find listed here as as being sort of typical areas of computer science. So from from that point of view, we've actually done things pretty well. Um, oh, that's right. If you go further down the page, that's where it is. Um, so we've got um, information coding theory, which is going to come up at level two. Um, algorithm data structures was at level one. Programming language is level one. AI is <coughs> level three. Um, computer graphics level three. Security level two. Uh, and software engineering. Um, programming is the introduction to software engineering, and there's some specific stuff on it at level three. And then there's things that aren't actually covered. Computational science, which by the way is chemistry using computers. <laughs> Um, and uh, and largely, some of us you can't you know, obviously can't cover everything, and others of it do require quite a bit of theory and mathematics to rigors of what you want to really make sense. And so, so anyway, that, that's the big context. Any questions or comments about those experience to add to what I have to say? Because one of the things I've taught a, taught a total of three level one classes this year, <laughs> like like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> You've probably done more than me, so I'm... Uh, oh, no, actually, no, I did six hours, actually. Yeah, I did two classes on Peter three times. But anyway, that's it. Uh, uh, so I've got a question. Yeah. Where does this sit with stage one university? Where ah, we're great question. Mm. Where are we here here? Because yeah. honestly, some of this stuff is that yeah. we taught, that I taught this year, is equivalent to what I did at stage one. Yes, yes, you're right. Um, so stage one university at the moment assumes nothing of the students. Okay? So <coughs> in fact, it still pretty much assumes they haven't touched a computer in their lives, which is, well, well actually, no, it doesn't quite. It assumes that they've used computers a lot, but it assumes that they've never done anything of this. 
Uh, and so therefore, anything that we're going to do, even at year 11, is going to be something that's going to have to save money, by definition. Um, having said that, how far we get is a bit different. My very, very crude assessment of it is that if they did everything between level 1 and level 3 that's available, they would have done a lot of what stage 1 students have done in computer science. Now, bear in mind, most computer science is only computer science is only about a third of what they do at stage 1, so they're required to do, well, I'll take Cambridge or not well, but most of the universities are similar. Um, we have 120 credits for the whole year, 120 points, which is not, it's pretty similar here, I think, isn't it? Into here. Um, and, um, and so we have 30 credits, in, well, 15 credits in programming, and 15 in uh, algorithms, which is the, again, sort of the basic tool that you need to make everything else work well. Not, not design, but in actual algorithms and so on. But then typically there's another 30 credits in mathematics that um, is required and if not 40, you know, encouraged to be 45, if not 36, quite a bit of first year mathematics. Um, and then beyond that, it depends on the student's interest. Some are interested in more the electronic side or more the um, things like um, biology because of um, genomic computation or geography because of geographic computation systems or Japanese because they hope they're going to have a good job in Japan uh, or music because it's like music. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's all fine because it's a very broad degree. So, so when we say first year computer science, we're talking about 30 out of 120 points. And in my view, a student that came through with lots of excellences and really strong maths, if they turn up at Canterbury, we would say, you go straight to second year. Uh, that would be lots of excellences and maturity and all that kind of evidence, you know, that sort of says, hey, this student has obviously got head around it really well. Uh, and, and, and so that's where it is. Now, the topic, you know, take a topic like artificial intelligence, um, there's a big difference between understanding what the topic is and being an expert in the topic. And so something like AI, uh, which is at level three, would be involved writing a report and, and in fact, would, um, uh, a, a whole bunch of my students have done work on this and, and I've got some nice examples of this that will release for people in lunch at level three. Um, but uh, the report would be asked, so one of the suggestions is um, just asking about four big questions. You know, um, what is AI? Can a computer be as intelligent as a human? What is AI actually used for at the moment in industry? And you know, a couple of questions like that, which do not require a lot of technical ability at all, but they require a lot of curiosity about like, will computers ever be as intelligent as human beings? What would it mean? Should we allow it? Is it ethical? You know, all those sort of questions. That's what AI is about. Now, if they do level three AI, they'll go in languages that AI programs need to know, they'll simulate little bits of intelligence which aren't really intelligent, but you know, they're really intelligent decisions and things like that. But, but at university, uh, sorry, at, at, at high school, the idea is simply that there's a chance to be fascinated with AI. Yeah. Uh, so from that point of view, they'll actually know a little more than our first year students who we kind of try and sort of, you know, say, hey, there's this cool topic at third year and there's this cool topic at second year and, and that sort of thing. But, um, students would actually have got to pick, pick a topic and do a whole lot of research and what are the big issues in that, that topic. Yeah. Yeah. Presumably as time goes on, you'll adjust your yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <coughs> and, and I think that I can see anything up like physics, um, where most first year physics students at university, you assume that they've done year 13 physics and they're kind of okay, and, and first year physics is kind of like, well, if they did really, really well, they'll probably find it pretty straightforward. If they did astonishingly well, you'd probably be able to skip it. Um, and for most students, it's a, you know, it's a good step up. And for students that never did physics at high school, uh, and they try and enrol in our first year physics course, we'd say, well, that's an introductory course over here for non majors. Just warm up on that one. Uh, and, and so, you know, I can see it ending up like that eventually, but um, at this stage, that's, that's kind of the next, the next wave. <laughs> Um, but, but definitely your students who, and, and you've probably identified some already, who are just nailing this up and loving it. Um, we would interview them, look at all your results, say, look, you, your maths is obviously really strong, you're a good communicator, you've, you know, you've, you've shown some maturity, we're going to throw you with the second year students. And the advantage to them is that they well, so Canterbury has a thing called direct entry, which means you can do level two, three, and four in three years. And it's only for honours top students, which are you know, sort of mainly excellent students, and um, they can get a four year degree in three years, uh, which is a good deal for the next 
asking for these students to do and so on. So they're still going to need three years to complete. Uh, Waikato have a completely different system. They have a scholarship uh, where they'll say, if, and they, they have an exam at the moment for year 13 students, and they say, well, if you do well in this exam, we'll give you, I can't remember, some of thousands of dollars or something. Five thousand, is okay. uh, And we'll put you in this special scholarship class, and I'll set in on that class. And it's cool because the teachers, the, the lecturers are assuming that these students are, are onto it, you know, and, and they're loving it and all that sort of stuff. In the main class, it's like, okay, none of you have done programming before, but here we go. Yeah, yeah. So different universities are probably taking it in different ways. But either way, yeah. Um, what we don't want to happen is they arrive at university and say, well, all that stuff you did at NCA, let's do it here. <laughs> On the other hand, three quarters of the students from this year won't have had the chance to do it. And so when they arrive, we'll just say, yep, let's go to the classes. Okay. Um, now, one other thing I just want to mention, I remember, is on the NZ Fit site, we've got lots of resources. We've got resources for Africa, we've got a fire hose worth of resources. Uh, and yeah, uh, and in fact, we just finished up taking a whole lot for level two as well, um, which will be released in the next couple of days, just in the same as just the right bit. Um, and so, if you go here, the, the programming ones are split out by language, and we've tried to pick introductory stuff that will be suitable for students of this age and so on. But when you look there, I mean, some of the stuff is like. If you printed it, it would be about 20 pages of books and resources. And who's actually used some of them? Yeah. Um, was it? I, we okay. haven't had any feedback on this. Oh, it, it's it's um, overwhelming, and it, it like you say, fire hose of resources. But it's brilliant because um, you can notice the ant will be in there. Right. <laughs> we, we've tried to classify it a wee bit, and so for example, there's a whole there's a section on videos for each topic. So if you think, oh, I want to show a YouTube video today, then Flip through hopefully only a dozen or so choices or something. Um, and, and some of it is inevitably more advanced. Like often um, the first two pages of the resource will be perfect for what you're doing, and then the next eight pages will be like way beyond what's needed. And so you, you don't, don't get overwhelmed by that either if it's a resource. Um, I would say it's incredibly valuable, and thank you very, very much for doing what you've done and supporting the teachers. Cause we're finding it useful for ourselves because we did really collect stuff from it and say, well, if you don't want to read it all, here's a pot of, you know, here's, here's our favourites. Yeah. Uh, and, and in fact, we, we have each one to start with our, our recommended ones, which is just, like, if you don't want to read the next 20 pages, here's, here's 10 things to look at. Um, and as we go through the level 2 stuff today, um, I'll mainly just do exactly those things. So if you want to find the links for them, just go online here. Um, and this is an old shop actually, because even the topics have changed since then. Um, but you'll, you'll find the, the link um, and under our favourites. Nearly everything I talked about today will be under the favourites. Just a few. I was going to say that one of the students last year, one year, the mm -hmm. In fact, I was just thinking that last night, so I've invited one of my students this year to come. Well, she's going to come for the second session. Uh, she's very good at writing stuff, and um, not quite so good at the class, but very good at writing stuff. And um, so we're going to get her to um, do the uh, a lot of development for you know sort of condense a lot of this. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I've had so many students. I, I have a fourth year class on teaching computer science and they study all this stuff. And it's been quite popular. And a lot of the students, their attitude is very much like, I so wish I had this at school. Uh, and I'm so keen to help you out with developing stuff for schools, uh, which is neat. So, I'm yeah. getting a lot of my students who are a bit up, so can I be able to look at them? Yeah. That's so different from what they can't Okay, so um, let's sort of move on to level two. Um, yeah, so the um, 
the main standard 2.44, it's actually got a number now, isn't it? 9173 or something. Yeah. Um, the, it, it, you know, it's an obvious progression. So I think 2.44 is an understanding of basic concepts, and, uh, advanced and then complex concepts with computer science. This is NCA terminology. Um, you, you don't want to go to a university person and say, tell me some complex concepts from computer science. <laughs> Uh, but, um, and, and just to quickly flick ahead, the level 3 one of the current draft that I'm aware of at the moment says pick one of these six topics and do a project on it. It's very simplistically. Um, and so um, the, it does cover a range of computer science, and my thinking about this is, you know, so here we've got intelligent systems, so if you've got a student who's really interested in, you know, will computers take over the world and all that sort of stuff. Say, so, okay, do a project on intelligent systems. And then there's a few basic you know, requirements and things like, you know, what are the main technologies, what are the main issues in this field, what are the boundaries of research, what are what's well established, you know, questions like that that you can ask uh, for any of these things. Um, and, and it just kind of encourages them to explore what's going on and hopefully either get them excited about it or get them to realise that, man, this is not something I'm interested in. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and, and, I, and I'm hoping too that when they look, this, this list of six kind of rounds out everything that's covered in level one and two, and between all of that, it, it gives a really broad overview of computer science. So I'd hope that in the process of picking those six, from those six, that actually think about what they are. And again, our, one of our big purposes of it is that students come out knowing what computer science is. Uh, and so the fact that they sort of see all these things, and, and uh, even if the really ideal thing is that they can't choose one, Six because they want to do all of them, some, you know, three or something like that. And, and that's the strong message. So, yep, this is for you. And if it leaves them cold, then uh, it's probably another message there as well. Now, one of the things I'm aware of um, that uh, has been a, a challenge for, for teachers that <coughs> I'm guessing that there's probably six teachers in the country that have a degree in computer science. Do you think? Yeah, I think we've got probably two or three of us building at the moment. Um, so, um, so, yeah, there's a lot of people who can get up to speed really quickly, um, and peer support's obviously going to be an important part of that. Um, universities, we've all got a lot of contact. Um, I've got lots of students who are pitching to help out in schools and so on if they get asked. This has been kind of a strange year to start off because no one's been pitching to do anything much other than keep the roof over their heads and things, but that's okay. Um, but one of the things that came through very early on is that, well, this stuff's scary, right? There's a lot of scary words and terminology and so on here. Um, and the reality is that we never all have time to sit down with teachers for long enough and do it. They usually come out going, oh, well, that's easy. Actually, that's quite fun. Can I have one of those to do in my class? And um, for part of the reason that I know that a lot of the stuff needn't be that hard is that we've had this unplugged project. Then how many people have seen computer science on that? Yeah, okay. um, a lot of the resources end up coming back to that. Um, it's computer science without computers, and it was originally developed um, well, for various reasons, but amongst others for um, third world countries where um, there are no computers or power available. Um, but also uh, to get students away from using the computer to do stuff um, to actually thinking about the concepts and then get on the computer and do the stuff afterwards. Um, and so um, that, that was aimed at 5 to 12 year olds and it's, uh, it's just gone huge. It's been translated into <coughs> 16 languages, it's used all around the world, it's um, recommended in international curricula and all sorts of stuff like that. But very few people have it as part of their, well, well have topics in their formal curriculum. Uh, in America, um, they're, in, they're really jealous of what we're doing here because they're really struggling to get this into high schools. Um, the UK are a year or two behind us. Um, Australia, I don't think we've made a lot of progress on this. Um, so we really are kind of a, a bit of a cutting edge country for that. We often are education, but we call it a bit of leading edge. Well. Um, and, and, yeah. But one of the things that um, that happened when I said these unplugged things, we do shows for, as part of Kids Fest, for the, the, you know, kids, parents bring them in, and it's just a, it's a lot of fun, and a lot of the stuff we'll look at today comes out of those kind of shows as well. Um, but 
At one point, a, a girl, and she must be nine years old, put up her hand and said, Can I ask you questions? She said, Why do you use such big words for such simple ideas? And, and I thought, That is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was stunned. So, so um, because you know, that's what a lot of it is. It's big words for simple ideas. And a lot of it, uh, you know, I think it, it, I mean, one of my honest answers is, well, it means people like me can throw around those big words and other people will think, well, that person deserves a high salary and promotion and <laughs> things like that. Uh, but the reality is that, um, you know, a lot of the stuff, that if you're interested, it's not hard. So anyway, one of the things I've, I've done is, um, I've done a handout for teachers called Big Words for Simple Ideas. <laughs> I wish I got the girl's name, because that's just brilliant. Um, so, oh, maybe it was one of you, because it was years ago. <laughs> Um, and so the um, what I've done here is I've tried to extract every big word that occurs from level one to level three, and just put in a brief definition of it. So um, there you go. Uh, this is just Tim's uh, definition that fits on one sheet of paper. So it's not, you know, you can't particularly teach from it or anything like that. But the main purpose of it um, that I want to achieve is that you can see that. That is the complete list of big, big words, and so it's it, and and really all of them. So if, you, if we take something like algorithm complexity, okay, that sounds like a super good word to throw in at a party. Um, it's how long an algorithm takes to run. Okay, I you know I downloaded the QuickSort program, I gave it a hundred numbers and it sorted them in three seconds. That's its complexity. Uh, and I've got it to sort 200 numbers and it took 5 seconds. And I've got it to sort 300 numbers and it took 8 seconds. Okay? You're talking about the complexity of that algorithm. That's it. And now, there's a whole lot more we can do about that. We can generalize it to a mathematical formula. We can you know, do all sorts of things. But in terms of NCA level 1, your students have analyzed the complexity of an algorithm if they've downloaded it and run it on different sizes figured out that, man, this algorithm really blows out when you start giving it five minutes of data. Um, the, the square, numbers and square brackets at the end of the line of the level where this is mainly used. So something like ASCII, I mean, how many people sort of comfortable with the word ASCII before today? Right, okay. So, um, and, and, and so some of these words, hopefully, you know, we've turned into a big deal. Um, but some of them may be unfamiliar, and some of them, they make a lot more sense when you've seen a few simple examples of it being used. And, and part of it is just that we want the students to know that there is a technique called encryption. Uh, you, know, you probably know roughly what it is, and maybe it comes up ideas of spiders and secret servers and things like that. But the reality is every time you log into your bank and do some banking, there is encryption happening because you sure don't want someone to read what you're typing if they can read, you know, if they hold on to the same network as you. And, you know, so. Uh, yeah. Big words for somebody. Um, again, any suggestions or additions or anything I've left out, just, just put me an email. This is a developing resource. Um, okay. But today we're going to focus. This is the preamble. <laughs> um, we're going to focus on level two, uh, and which some of you are likely to have a go at, and that's cool. Um, and for those of you who are in Christchurch, um, you know, do give us an email or whatever. We're hoping next year we'll have a lot more spare time. And in the first half of the year, I run a year course for my students uh, where they, they do nothing for two months but learn about computer science education. Uh, and um, so it, it assumes that they have a degree in computer science, but how do you actually ed educate people about it? And there's so many issues, like how do you choose the first programming language? Uh, you know, there's a whole lecture on that. So much research and literature about it, and it, it's always good for a heated debate in the tea room as well. Um, but uh, the, and it, they have a major project where they have to develop a resource that would be useful, ideally for NCA. Um, and so a lot of the resources that, um, and sometimes what they've done is a critique of resources and things like that. Um, one of the, or well, a couple of the ones that we link to here are just resources that they've developed. Like your students, my students range from ones that put out a resource where you go, that is fantastic, it's ready to go, through to, okay, for a bit of work, there's some material in there that might be useful to some people. And, <laughs> and so, although we might have 10 students during that class, you might only see three or four of those resources um, because 
perspective completely now. Um, and I mean, one of the things that just seems to be part of student culture is some of them don't aim for excellence, right? And it's, um, it's life, right? Uh, so, the 2.44 AS910, something or other standard, says that students will, will demonstrate an understanding of computer science by showing that they know how to represent data using bits, they know about encoding, and they know about HCI and usability heuristics. Um, and so, basically, I'm going to go through each of those. Um, just out of interest, how many people, have, uh, so encoding data using bits is primarily binary numbers. How many people are really confident with binary numbers? Okay. Most people. Yeah, cool. Um, so we won't dwell on that too much. Um, but it's not just numbers, of course. It's, it's letters and pictures and stuff like that. Uh, but once you have the numbers, it's pretty straightforward. Um, encoding, so compression, which mainly is used for JPEGs on cameras, for MP3 files on trailers and so on. And again, it's not how does the compression work, although there are activities where you get a taste of what must be going on to do the compression. Um, but the kind of experiments they would do there would be, um, you know, take different kinds of music, and you know, how much smaller is a wave, is, is an MP3 file than a wave file? You want, want to tell me? About five meters in people's city. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Always. What if? Yeah. yeah. What if the file was silence? You know. What if it was? Um, and, and, and what if you go for high quality compression, or low quality compression? And, and, and then suddenly you've got all sorts of interesting questions. But the, the skills needed are getting something off a CD onto an MP3 player. So it's not really rocket science, but it's actually looking at those some deeper questions. And and, and of course the real message in here is. What would the world be like if compression didn't exist? Okay, well, MP3 players would hold five songs and they would take three hours to download and, you know, all, all that sort of stuff. And so suddenly it's an awareness of how this um, particular technique can do science and influences things. Uh, and we'll look at um, error correction and encryption in a minute as well. Uh, and then usability actually is also at level one. So those of you who have done level one have probably had a good taste of this. But just provide a few more rules and guidelines. Now the nice thing about this is that um, this is how the standard ended up about a month ago. Um, before that it actually had some other stuff in it as well. But, um, but with these three things you can actually pick almost any digital device, almost any device at all that's got buttons on these days, um, and it will use all of those things. And so for example, if we pick um, so, so, so those, those three areas are about you know, capacity, bits, bytes, and all that sort of stuff, uh, about encoding and about usability. So what's it mean to have a 16 gigabyte iPhone? Is that bigger than an 8 gigabyte iPhone? Uh, what's an 8 megapixel camera do? You know, how much better is 8 megapixels than 4 megapixels? Um, and the answer is not.